Hi everybody, Creative Katie, Karen Virtual. Welcome to my channel and an art journal tutorial. This one's perfect for beginners and it just brings me joy. It's so cute. I started this page using bright yellow, turquoise, and deep violet. Now this is my Canson Mixed Media. I believe it's 9 by 12. And I did not gesso this page. And if I had, the paint goes on way easier and smoother and I can blend the colors easier. So I highly recommend gessoing it first. Now I'm mixing the colors wet on wet. I'm being a little careful not to mix the purple with the yellow because I know that's gonna not give me a color I like. So often I put the turquoise as a barrier between them. The turquoise and yellow is going to make green. I'm working fairly quickly, not as quickly as the time lapse is showing. And then I decide, you know, that yellow is not what I want. I thought it was, so I tried to wipe it off. I wiped off the excess and then I'm just putting layers of the turquoise and deep violet on top of it. I'm getting rid of the yellow and I'm getting rid of the green that the turquoise and the yellow made. I just decided that really wasn't what the way I wanted to go. It wasn't working the way I want. So with acrylic paint, let it dry and then you can paint right on top of it. Sometimes you might need to put a little gesso depending on the colors you're using. So now I'm just mixing a little more turquoise and a little more of the deep violet. Then I add bright aqua. And this is just to brighten the page. The page was getting a little bit too dark for me. And I knew what I was going to do, that I was going to be putting the penguins on, and I knew it was going to be black against this. So I knew that I needed to brighten and lighten the background. And the bright aqua here did just that. Now, because I'm not adding it when the other paints are wet, I'm not getting any blending. So. But I'm okay with that. So there are the three colors that I use. So if you're starting this page, bright aqua, deep violet, and turquoise. Now I still want it to brighten and lighten this page more. So I'm going to do that with the stencils. So I grab this Fantangle stencil, one of my fast favorites. I love the movement this gets, and I'm stenciling with the bright aqua. I want lots of pattern on this. Now I know I want the background to look like a snowy day. So lots of wind and snowflakes without being snowflakes. And the triangular motif in this stencil is perfect for that. It wasn't quite as bright and light as I want it. So I'm coming in with the same stencil and white. And you can see instantly how that just brightens up the page. So I keep adding this all over the page. Remember, I want it to look like a snowstorm. Along that, I wanted to add a different stencil but with similar effect. So this is the Retroverse stencil. It has the same triangular shapes, but they're in circles. And I know I'm going to be putting the penguins in it that are circular later on. And I love how the Retroverse and the Fantangle stencil play off each other. And I love, love, love this snowy background. So here we're getting kind of a wintry feel without buying a stencil that can only be used for winter scenes. I've used both of these stencils lots. So I'm placing where I'm going to put the penguins. And now you could just trace circles with something round like a lid. But 
I highly recommend buying a circular template like you see me using here. I have used this so much. At first, I was a little bit reluctant to spend money on circle templates, but it just makes perfect circles and is so easy to use. I'll put a link to it, the other stencils, as well as these metal words that I'm using as tracers on here. You've seen me recently use the Believe one, and now I'm using the Joy one. Now that the circles are done, I grabbed my angle brush and my black Liquitex Basics paint, and I'm just painting the circle completely black. The angle brush gets right up to that line. You need to push down on it, and it's just so effortless. So if you're struggling painting in, and being precise, try an angle brush. Now I could have painted the black on a piece of paper, cut it out and collaged it down. And I thought about doing that. I just thought this one, for this one, I'm going to paint my penguin on. So now that the circles are done, I grabbed a smaller angle brush and I'm going to paint in the letters. Now in the other video, I used my fine line applicator bottle that was filled with black acrylic paint that had been thin and I flooded the letters. So there's two different ways that you can do it. I just figured I had the black paint out already for this one, so I just decided to use the fine uh, angle brush. But if this is too fine for you, then flooding it using a fine line applicator would be the perfect thing if the letters were smaller. So this is if you have any stencils that have words on them, you can just trace it with a Posca pen or pencil and then paint them in this way. And that might be more precise than stenciling. So here are the little penguins, and I will put a link to the blog where I got this pattern. This was actually a paper plate penguin project. And when I saw it, I just fell in love with these little penguins. So I got the pattern. It was a free printable, and I shrunk it down to 40% and made myself my little tracers for all the parts. So here I'm tracing the white part. Now again, I could have just cut this out of white and collaged it on. I think it would be cute also to cut out this, the belly part of the penguin out of some different gel prints and then they all have, you know, an interesting belly and you will definitely see me making this penguin again different variations I just loved it he's the, I could not stop smiling the whole time I was making these penguins they're just so so very very cute so now I'm taking white acrylic paint and I'm painting the white of the belly now when you're adding white, especially on top of a dark surface, you often have to do a couple coats. Let it dry in between or dry it with a heat tool as you saw me doing and then come back with the second or third coat to get the level of opacity that you want. Now, while the paint is wet, now and to get rid of any of the blotchiness, I just stamp pressed into it with my shelf liner. That gave an imprint, so we have a very, very subtle pattern, but you can't see any of the imperfections that were there. I grab my Posca paint pen and I'm drawing in the eyes. I just rediscovered my Posca paint pen and I'm absolutely loving it. I don't know why I stopped using it. I 
but I definitely will be using it up now. And the good thing is I've had it for over two years, maybe even longer, and they still work perfectly. I primed them up and they just are great. So that's the kind of art supply I like. So here are the feet that I traced. Now I didn't want them to be black around the outside edges, so I am tracing this with my ink tense pencil. But you could trace with a pencil. Again, I could have traced this on orange paper and collaged the feet and the nose on. I traced on the wings with my Posca paint pen, and now I'm going to colorize all those elements. So here I have orange paint. Now this orange paint is actually Artist Loft, and I love the, the orange color, and it works mostly fairly well, but it got very splotchy. It wasn't giving me even coverage which the Liquitex Basics does. So different qualities of paint give you a different effect. Some make it actually harder for you to use than others. And you'll see the difference when I paint the wings black with the Liquitex paint. Now the nose part, I because it goes up where there was some black, I needed to paint that out with white gesso first and then go in with the orange. Because of course the orange isn't going to cover the black and it would just look funny on the beak. So here I decided to paint straight up, no water added to the acrylic paint and I'm having a little bit better luck, but it's very splotchy. But I solved that problem later on. And if it does that, sometimes you just need to go back with multiple coats of paint, let them dry in between. Now here you can see how well this black covers. It's just effortlessly. It's just smooth and the paint did not separate. It's just easy. And again, the angle brush is making this extra easy. Now I don't show every single penguin, every single step that I do, but whatever I do with one, with one penguin, I'm doing with all of them. And I turn the page so it's easy for me to get to where I need to be. Now that the gesso's dried, I'm adding some orange paint. It's still very splotchy. It was right about now that I looked at this and I, instead of seeing the snowy background, I thought that kind of looked like it could be a Christmas tree. And these round penguins could be Christmas ornament balls. And I thought about putting like a topper on them and make them turn them into Christmas ornaments. I it didn't in the end, but I thought I'd give you that option. If that's something you wanted to do. Now I'm do, starting the finishing process. I am using the floating acrylic technique and I am shading the white part and the orange part of the penguin. This gets rid of any harsh lines. It provides shade, shading and shadowing. And in the end, I'm going to show you a picture of before all the finishing and after. 
and you can see the difference for yourself that these little steps do make to the finished project. So they're well worth your time. So now that I've shaded on the inside, on the white part, I'm going to shade around the penguin. And this is going to help the penguin stand up from the background. Shading, using the floating acrylic technique, it was it's permanent when dry. You could use a charcoal pencil or a Stabilo all pencil, but those will not be permanent. And if you're adding wet layers afterwards, that could be problematic for you. At this stage, you're really not, so you could get away with doing that very easily. Now on the feet, I decided to add another layer of color, and I'm using cadmium red and I'm using the floating acrylic technique still and just adding that color to it so it's not so one tone that also helps get rid of any blemishes or imperfections splotchiness that's in the paint and I had lots on the orange one but I loved how that hit it and just added so much And then I came back in and I shaded with black. Shading this way instead of outlining with a marker. I prefer that look, but you could just take a marker, thin, thin, thin Sharpie, and trace around that if that's the look you like. You can see the difference from one penguin to the next, what that little bit of shading does. Now I'm shading around the page, the edge of the page. That's to frame the page. I also shaded around the word joy a little bit to make it stand out. I wanted the word joy to stand out a little bit more, so I grabbed my fine line applicator bottle. This time I have white paint, Liquitex Basics paint that has been thinned, and I will be putting out a video on how to mix the paint for the fine line applicator bottle, as well as how to clean tips. So stay tuned and check back for that video. It's something that many of you have asked for. I was recently messaged somebody asking about basic art journal supplies, and I definitely would put these fine line applicator bottles on that list.
Now I splattered with silver paint and I, I'm sorry that the footage somehow got lost or I didn't hit record. Taking off the tape across the top. And then I realized I forgot to add highlights on the wing. So I, and that's what I'm doing right now. I'm using the floating acrylic technique with my angle brush and just adding the white highlights. And that's just making it possible to make out the wing. If you don't follow me on Instagram, please go to Instagram and follow me at Creative Katie. I'm hoping to hit 2,000. Followers before 2020 is out. Actually, I would like to hit 2020 before 2020 is out. And a little bit of highlight on the top, across the top of the penguin's head. I think these penguins would be beautiful on a greeting card for Christmas. In fact, I may make some. So here is the page before I did any of the finishing. And here it is after. I think it made a big difference. Take time to do the finishing steps. Here are some close-ups. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you find joy in whatever you're creating today. Bye.